Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and today Apple released iOS 15.5 Beta 4. This is currently available to developers, and I would expect the public beta usually later in the day by the time I release this video, or the next day. The last beta they actually released by the time this video was out. Now along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 15.5 Beta 4, Watch OS 8.6 Beta 4, TV OS 15.5 Beta 4, Mac OS 12.4 Beta 4, HomePod OS 15.5 Beta 4, and also a new Studio Display 15.5 Beta 2. That's for the Studio Display camera as they're trying to fix that. Now, this came in at a fairly reasonable 537.1 megabytes that's on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and it was between 400 and 600 megabytes on all the devices we have here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 19F5070B. As we get closer to a final release, we'll get another build where the build number will switch to an A at the end, and then we'll get a release candidate and a final release typically. So we could be a few weeks away from a final release to the public. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later in the video. Now, the first thing is there's no modem update in beta four. So coming from beta three to beta four on the 13 pro max, we still have the same modem build number of 1.61.00 for the modem firmware. So it's the same update. I really had no issues with cellular connectivity with beta three. Hopefully beta four is the same, or maybe it'll just be resolved from some other code within, but we'll have to wait a few days to see what it's like. Now, many of us are excited for iOS 16 and WWDC or the worldwide developer conference. Apple announced that this would take place on June 6th, 2022, and that some people would be able to attend, but they would have to apply to do that. This is the place where we'll see iOS 16 for the first time, beta one released to the developers and all of the new features. And as you can see today, they've actually said when you can submit to try and attend through this program. So as you can see here, it says eligibility, attending this event is free and open to members of the Apple Developer Program and Apple Developer Enterprise Program. Invitations will be allocated through a random selection process and are non-transferable. It says you have to submit your request by May 9th at 9 a.m. Pacific time to May 11th, 9 a.m. Pacific time. You'll be notified of your status or whether or not you can attend by May 12th at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So if you wanted to attend in person and you're a developer, you'll be able to watch the keynote with other developers and engineers, as well as the state of the union videos along with Apple engineers and meet with different experts if you need help developing your app. So that's open May 9th. Now, last week with beta three, Apple updated air tags and that started rolling out. There's a new version 1.0.301 that helps with the different volume when you're trying to locate an item with an air tag and many people don't have the update yet. In fact, within the code, it actually says when it will roll out. So 10% of people with air tags will get the update today. Another 25% will get it by May 9th or total of 25%. And then all air tags that don't already have the update should be updated by May 13th. So these updates are rolling out very slowly. Unfortunately, there's no way to force this to update similar to what you can do with AirPods. So we just have to wait for it to update. As far as new changes and updates within iOS 15.5 beta four, well, this is a pretty small update from beta three. There's a new graphic change when it comes to tap to pay, tap to pay. So when you tap to pay through your iPhone to another iPhone, which is a new feature we'll see in the future, my friend, Steve Mosier, thanks again for helping me with this tweeted this out and you can see it here. So you have basically a very similar icon here for tap to pay. There's a slight color change and it's shifted ever so slightly. So you can see that here. So not a huge change there. And then mostly there's wording changes within also. So if your iPhone is unable to access cellular data or radio antennas, such as the ultra wideband antenna, some of the wording has changed where before it would say, say either reinstall iOS or that it couldn't make or receive calls. Now it will actually say there is a problem with iPhone's ability to access cellular data or make and receive calls or messages. So that has to do with Apple's new fixing program where you can repair your phone yourself. And you can see that by going to Apple or going to their website. And that's Apple's self-service repair.com website where you can borrow tools, change out your display on your own if you want to do that. So those messages have been updated. They'll probably change further once 15.5 is released to the public. Now, universal control looks like it's very close to exiting beta. 
On the iPad, we've had universal control for a little while now. And if we go into our settings, go to general and then airplay and handoff, you'll see it says cursor and keyboard beta. The code shows beta is removed in some instances. So it looks like we're getting very close to just having the feature without Apple changing anything. So it looks like they finally got this working hundred percent. However, it still says beta with beta four. So maybe we'll see that change in the future. Now, as far as known and resolved issues, well, there was a major issue that happened with iPad if you're using an Apple Pencil and a Magic Keyboard. That's resolved this time around. Let me show you what that looks like. So if I move my phones aside, with the iPad attached to the Magic Keyboard, you'll see I have my Apple Pencil. Now I can use my Apple Pencil when it's attached to the Magic Keyboard. With Beta 3, this was a problem and it just wouldn't work. Once you detached your iPad, it would work fine, but it wouldn't work with the Magic Keyboard attached. So this time around, they fixed that issue and it's working just fine. There was also another issue that was happening with mail. I heard more about this as time went on. This started affecting me on Monday where I would go into mail and try and clear mail and it just wouldn't clear. Or I would have a notification that I have messages and they just wouldn't appear in my mail. So that's actually been resolved. At least it's working properly now on beta four. Also, many people are still having that issue with storage. So if we go into iPhone storage in our settings, let's see how long this takes to load. And I'll try it on the iPhone 11 also, since I just booted that up before the video. So we'll go to general with the new update and we'll see how long it takes. It seemed to load pretty quickly there. And if we go to the bottom, most people were concerned about system data. I really haven't had too many issues with it. And you'll see on the iPhone 11, it loaded nice and fast and is only using 2.6 gigabytes. This was only an issue because it was using up to 50 gigabytes on some iPhones. I would say if it's below 20 or definitely below 10 gigabytes, that's fine. The OS will actually use this as needed, whether it's installing the update, processing in the background, indexing, and more. So you'll see now it's even below a gigabyte for me. So I'm curious if this is resolved for you within a few gigabytes, that's fine. Under 10 gigabytes typically isn't a problem, but it does seem to be resolved for me on this update. As far as overheating and the phone being hot, well, even after updating to beta four, it was nice and cool. This time around, it stayed nice and cool with no issues whatsoever. So that's a great sign. No real problems or heat issues. It doesn't get overly hot, at least so far on beta four and beta three was getting very warm for some people. However, it was better than beta two. Now, as far as additional resolved issues and known issues, well, Apple has not updated the feedback app yet with new notes. So we don't know if there's anything different going from beta two to beta three. There was zero differences. They actually kept the same notes and just changed the actual number. So as I check on my Mac here, that's in the background on the developer website, I don't see any updates either. So, so far they haven't updated it at all. Hopefully they updated it in the future where we'll see if there's any differences, but so far at the time of this video, they haven't changed anything with the notes. So we don't know if there's any changes, enhancements or anything else. If there's any changes, of course, I'll let you know in the follow-up video. As far as overall battery life, well, battery life has been hit or miss miss for me. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. You'll see my battery health is at 100%. I also checked this on coconut battery and it's still 100%. That's an app on the Mac where you can check your battery health. If we go back, we'll take a look at the last 10 days and you can see here, I'm at two hours and 21 minutes of screen on time yesterday and five hours and 18 minutes of screen off time. I used about 50% of my battery. That's not very good. And the prior week or last Friday, three hours and 50 minutes of screen on time, six hours and 13 minutes of screen off time. Home screen and lock activity with notifications is using a lot of power. So that's something I just need to change, but it does get me through a day typically at 50%, maybe 40 to 50. Usually I expect 50 to 60%, but it is a beta. But as we get closer to the final, I would expect this to improve. As far as overall performance, well, so far it's been quite good. Geekbench scores show that, and I'll show that in a moment, but on everything from the iPhone 8 Plus, whether we're going into music, loading that, loading a song, scrolling, we're just loading off Wi-Fi. It's taking a moment here. You'll see it's loaded and scrolling and everything is nice and fast. I haven't really seen any performance complaints with any of these betas, especially from beta two to beta three. We take a look at the benchmark scores. I scored 1,729 for single core and 4,806 for multi-core. Multi-core has improved quite a bit. 
if we take a look at the history, you can see here that multi-core is one to 200 higher than previous run tests. Single core is about the same. So quite a bit of an improvement there. Maybe that has something to do with background processes no longer needing the CPU. So it definitely seems to be a little bit better. I'll take a look at all of them a few days after we've used this for a while, and then I'll do a follow up on the weekend. Now that leads me to, should you install iOS 15.5 beta four? I would say at this point, it's definitely stable enough. Typically by the time we're at beta three or beta four, you can try it out. However, if you're using it on your main device and you have critical applications, I would just make sure I have a backup and a computer so I could roll back to the current public version if I needed to use it. Otherwise, if you're already beta testing on beta three, definitely update to beta four. Now, as far as iOS 15.4.2, at this point, I said in my follow-up video as well, I'm not really expecting anything from Apple at this point. Maybe we won't see an update. If we do, maybe we'll see something in the next couple of days to address security concerns and maybe some bug fixes. But right now it would be very minor and it looks like Apple is really focusing on 15.5's release and maybe iOS 16. Currently we're on a weekly schedule with iOS 15.5 betas. So I would expect beta five or a release candidate by next week, next Tuesday or Wednesday on the 10th or 11th, with maybe a release candidate the following week with a final release, maybe at the end of May, maybe on the 23rd or 24th, before we get to WWDC on June 6th. Then we'll have iOS 15 betas and iOS 16 betas at the same time until a final release in September, usually around the middle of the month where they release it to the public. So that's typically what Apple does every single year. So that's everything with iOS 15.5 beta four, not a huge release, but some exciting news about WWDC if you were hoping to attend that. And also we're waiting for that AirTag firmware update as well. Not really any huge updates at this point, and I wouldn't expect any major changes until iOS 16 is released. Maybe Apple's just focusing everything on iOS 16, and hopefully we'll see quite a few surprises with that. Now, if you've found anything else in iOS 15.5 beta four, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. Thank you.